Okay, today we're gonna vibe out a brand new application from scratch using VS Code and agent mode. Uh, and what I wanna do is create a website that allows me to easily create these badge codes over here for any MCP readme, basically. Uh, now, I actually created a prompt file that you know anyone can use really easily to basically like create these badges. Those are really, really nice to create the badges with the color scheme. And I like it because even though there's MCB registries, if you're in documentation, one click install into VS Code and Visual Studio. So let's go over here and I'm just going to come in and let's go ahead and say, uh, let's create a new website that helps uh, developers uh, create the markdown necessary to create badges for their MCP servers that can open VS Code and Visual Studio directly. Instructions uh, of how these work are here. Also browse through the MCP documentation at HTTP model context, context protocol.io for all the ways folks can build and ship these. Let's build out a Vite application that I want to then deploy to GitHub pages. Okay, let's look at our built-in tools. I'm just gonna go ahead and disable a few of these in here for now. Perfect, speed it up a little bit and go. So yeah, so the first thing it's going to do basically is start to go through and, you know, start to read the documentation here. I have agent memory, so we're going to get a little bit of memory going on. Let's go ahead and just start fetching those pages for us. There we go. I'm just going to allow always for this session and just going to start iterating through documentation, hopefully, and figure some stuff out. There we go. Uh, -doo -doo. It's going to save some information out to memory. Uh, here, perfect. I'm just going to allow always for the session. Cool. Let's do it. And then, yeah, hopefully it's just going to look. So, yeah, there's there's nothing in this at all. So it's going to go ahead and create the V template, React TypeScript. Beautiful. All right. And let's see what it does. Cool. Looks like it's going to go ahead and try to communicate. So yes, allow, that's good. It's gonna apply yes. It's one of those new functionalities that can actually like respond to like what's happening in here as well. So like, do you wanna send no? So like allow that, that's pretty cool. Um, I like it. It's kind of interactive mode as well. So I'd seen that before. So let's go ahead and do that. Pretty clever. All right, so we have the basic app over here, so that's pretty good. So hopefully it gets a little server up and running and we'll go from there. So good old NPM install action over here, end of the day. Now, the reason why this is a little bit complicated is because if you actually look at this uh, readme schema, so if I just open this up, those URLs are like quite complicated as you can kind of see here. So there's a bunch of encoding and there's a bunch of like things that are happening here to basically get that stuff in there for the Docker commands, for the URLs and everything like that. So if you actually look at that prompt file over here, you can actually see that it actually gives a bunch of hints basically on how to configure it, um, like what the encoding needs to be for insiders and for VS Code uh, inside of here. And then also, um, the different URL encoding helpers that it gives it as well. So it kind of like helps out there, which is kind of cool. So let's see what is going on over here. Oh, cool. It looks like it started it up. So cool. So far we got nothing. We got a nice little Vite React application. Cool. All This might be one of the instances where I'm going to stop. I'm going to say, cool, it is created, carry on. Cool, let it go. Perfect. 
when in doubt, if it's sitting there spinning, it might just not have read the terminal. So should be able to go and do this now. So cool. Awesome. So now it's going to go ahead and just sort of create the application. So it's reading all the files, seeing what's in the default template here. and has the whole context, so it should know exactly all the things that it had done before and what we actually wanted to do. So even though I said carry on, it's still going to kind of, you know, now carry on at this, at this point, basically, which is kind of nice. So, and as we wait, let's get some Pokemon going over here. Let's get a Jigglypuff going. That sounds good. Perfect. Awesome. So yeah, now at this point, it's just going to be cooking. So nothing really to really worry too much about besides it's just cooking up some stuff uh, inside of here. Now, the reason I use Cloud Sonnet uh, 4 or 5 is that there's a lot of reasoning behind the scenes. So it's going to be thinking about the entire application, thinking about like everything it sort of needs to do, and then it's going to um, start to build it out. So I like that. It's also going to use some beautiful CSS styling. Really appreciate that and go to town. So what we get from it and hopefully if we go over here it's still running nope not running yet so I'll probably have to restart it back up let's see we got the app cs let's go ahead and shrink some of this stuff down looks good tsx nice so it looks like it's like Docker local inside of here. Looks pretty good. V config. So this is going to want to do some sensitive file to package.json because it's probably because it's a GitHub pages here. So that probably makes a lot of sense. We can see, yep, and that is that GitHub pages distro. It's going to npm install that. So it looks good. The one thing that I'd really like for it to do in general is actually like search that. So I'm going to say do a bunch of recursive search for how folks bundle up and serve uh, MCP servers for different languages and their configurations. It's on boom, oops, on HTTP uh, model context protocol IO, and make sure we have handled all of these scenarios for installation. Cool. Well, looks like we have a README. That looks good. In here, give me an overview of everything. I like love it. And then it's going to update the memory, run the development server, and we'll see what we get in general. So let's go ahead and run dev. Perfect. Project plan. Perfect. Cool. All right. Perfect. Okay, so we have, yeah, nice. We have different servers, configuration, what it is, if it's a local binary. Looks okay. Um, let's see. So if I was to go over here and I was to go here, I could say here's my URL. Boop. Paste it in here. I'll say monkey MCP. That's pretty cool. Updates in real time. And then boom, then you have your markdown. And here's your, you know, JSON configuration that you might have for it, markdown, bingo, bango, and you're totally good to go. And you get these little URLs, this one, insiders, non-insiders. Cool. That looks good. Then let's make sure that, okay, yep, open that up. Say also, please allow, please make sure that the badge for normal VS code on insiders as the correct URL, which is just is without insiders dot the front. Cool. Now it's going to keep going. So it's, it's vibing, it's doing stuff inside of here. 
So it's letting the deployment guide good in here. I guess if you did local, right, it's just going to say, oh, what's the, the package? What's the arg? So that's pretty good. It makes a lot of sense. If that was like NPM, whatever, and the options that you had. So that makes a lot of sense there too. Pretty cool. Uh, as this is typing out, I'm going to give it a to-do list. At the bottom, also um, add a link to this GitHub, which will be James Monty Magno slash MCP badge creator and put links to it was created with VS Code and GitHub Copilot. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Actually, like it's now let me get more files to help understand the MZP protocol better. So interesting. It's actually like doing a bunch of other work here. And again, this is one of those parts uh, in general to uh, Claude Sonnet 4.5 that just kind of is going and doing its thing. So it has the MCP guide, creating work inside of it, making sure it has everything. Now it's going to summarize into the document. That looks good. And then the question is, do we want to change anything in here? Uh, no, it's fine. I think it's actually... It's actually fine, to be honest with you. I think that there's not a lot of things that would probably actually change too much. Love a purple gradient. So maybe let's do, um, let's tell it to do one other thing. Let's say, uh, let's, let's update the background to um, some VS Code Insiders green styles since AI loves purple. There you go. Awesome. Cool. So I did this whole thing. Yeah. Awesome. Good vibes. It's looking good. I like it. Cool. Uh, built the stuff, did the thing. I love it. I love it. Love it. Cool. 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 And go. So we're just going to let it build the thing, do the thing. And let's see here. We're going to initialize this repo. I should probably have done that to begin with. Now we have one. We have a git ignore. So it did have that. I love it. That looks good. Looks good. Okay. Let's go ahead and commit that stuff in here. This looks good. I have a deploy in my work files here. I like that. Awesome. Cool. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and commit that before it makes a bunch of changes. Let's see what it did. It's reading stuff, it's opening stuff, it's looking at stuff. Okay, cool. It's gonna fix that. It's gonna add the footer section for it as well. Let's look here, see what it did. Yep, so VS Code badge. I assume that that is probably because just my actual issue on my other one, not my actual prompt. So I should come over here. I should, is this in, yeah, it's, let's say insiders. I'm pretty sure it's not I'm trying to open up the VS code. And this one does insiders. Oh, it actually does it. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious now, copy link. Okay. Yeah. You don't need insiders. There must be a flag on it basically that does it. But I think here I'm going to fix the prompt just in case people do this. Boop. Let's do this while it's, while it's cooking, when in doubt, let it cook. This code, um, we should do this. Now let's do this here. That's cool. Commit changes and then we're good. Awesome. Okay. Let's see what's cooking up. Oh, cool. We got a green back. <laughs> got a green background. Perfect. Cool. Oh, nice. It has like this based on documentation, VS Code, Copilot, View on GitHub. Amazing. I love it. CSS for hint fields. Ooh, I like that. That's cool. Looks good. Oh, here we go. So we have Node.js, UVX, Docker, Container, local binary. Very nice. Cool. This is good. This is kind of what I was hoping for is like what it what it had here. So this is cool. And here's the scripts. Here's the, the UVX. That's what we're talking about. So what I ended up doing there is I told it to kind of do that recursive 
um, looking basically on it. So like recursively go through and, and look for those um, automatically as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, the one, one thing here for target IDEs, say for target IDEs, can you make those check boxes look nicer for me? I know that I don't need to do this. Um, maybe more card like or toggles, something nicer. I was like, like something, something nicer. You know, it's kind of what I want. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, in, in my mind, I'm just sort of talking to it and trying to figure out like what else do I want it to possibly do uh, inside of here. So let's see. Perfect, comprehensive. Sounds good. Nice. Boom, 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 boom. Love it. Okay. Awesome. UVX, this. And I could add like the DNX one as well, which is the .NET one. So let's just do this one more change here and then go. All right. I just want to see. I just want to see what it can do here. I just feel like this isn't isn't doing it for me as far as the styling. But besides that, the, the rest of the site, it looks perfect. So I'm very happy about whatever's happening there. So let's see what it's going to do for a card-based toggle design. I give it very generic, but I did give it exactly what I wanted it to do. Ah, let's see what it's going to do. Oh my goodness. That's not what, it, not yet. It's still like writing the CSS, I assume. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. This is my favorite part is like, especially in like the hot live reloading. There we go. At that beautiful CSS. You can do it. Um, and I like those kind of like apps on demand, right? Is here's everything that's sort of happening. All right. Do we get it? Oh, oh my gosh. Look at that. That's pretty good. I don't know about that checkbox, but that is not too shabby. I like it. I like it. Oh my gosh. That's, that's amazing. Okay. So at this point, we are good to go. Awesome. Let's go ahead and commit this code. Perfect. Yes. Let's go ahead and now publish the branch to public repo. Awesome. And open on GitHub. Settings. And then GitHub pages. Boop. Of actions. Beautiful. And then if this is working correctly, we should have a action kickoff. Okay. It's built, it's deploying, it's queued. And the real question is like, now will it deploy fully to it or not? Quite successful. Did it actually give me a URL? It did. Hey, yo, and we're live. So there you go. Um, just under 20 minutes or so, we have the full thing vibed out from my mind to all of you, and it is live on the internet uh, there. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Just unfiltered. Here it is happening and good to go. Um, that is quite astonishing. I love it. Cool. And with that, hope you enjoy this. Check out the code and I'm going to go review it uh, and then tweet it out to people. All right. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, do all those things. Peace.